Hello guys, and welcome to today's video. It's time for another Scottish summer with a look at Outlander's second season. But this year, we won't be in the Highlands. We're crossing the channel to the continent, where Claire and Jamie will find a new temporary home in the City of Light. The aftermath of the Fraser's first Parisian dinner party is felt all throughout their lives, but that's nothing compared to a familiar face who's coming to France. Anyway, here are our thoughts on Outlander's untimely resurrection. Make sure to stick around till the end for a bonus. First, you did a good job of keeping your master safe. We start with the chaos that broke out at the dinner party right after the main course, when everyone was arrested. Almost everyone is back home and free, except Alex Randall, who is wrongly accused of rape and let out of the Duke's service. To make things worse, Prince Charles Stuart left the party with Comte Saint Germain, who was a sworn enemy of the Randalls. Claire and Jamie didn't waste any time solving the mystery, which includes finding out why the attackers called Claire La Dame Blanche. Loose lips sink ships, or at least makes your wife mad at you, Jamie. But that's not the part that stands out to me the most. It's when Jamie comes home after a long night and finds Claire and Fergus waiting for him. Fergus sound asleep. Jamie picks him up gently and tells him he did a good job protecting Claire and their unborn child. His voice and eyes have a soft, simple fatherly tenderness, and you can see it in Claire's eyes in the background. You can tell that Jamie is not only ready for fatherhood, but also excited about it, even though Claire later tells her husband that she isn't sure how good a mother she is. But because I've seen the rest of the series, I know that Jamie won't get the chance to be the father of the baby Claire is carrying. Foresight is a sharp sword that hurts to carry. Second, Mary's progress. When Claire calls Mary over to check on her after her attack, Mary seems fine. She's scared and worried that she might be pregnant because of what happened, but she's otherwise in good health. Thanks, Claire, for taking such good care of her. And her love for Alex hasn't gone away. It's only grown stronger. Even though she wasn't to blame for the attack, she lost her virginity because of it. This means that the Viscount won't marry her. Oh, the politics and rights of women in the 18th century. Now that she's free, she can go after Alex and tell Claire that they will get married. Oh, Claire is in a bad situation. Put Alex Randall in jail to protect Frank, but break her friend's heart? Or steer the ship of young love on its way, even if it means she might lose her husband from the 20th century? For a moment, you wonder if Claire, who is standing by the fire with Mary's letter to Alex in her hand, will let the physical embers burn out the embers in Mary's heart. Those moral politics have shown their ugly heads again. Will Claire do something bad, but with a good reason, like she and Jamie planned to do at their dinner party with the Prince and Louise last week? Claire helps Alex get out of the Bastille because of her sense of right and wrong in her love for her friend. But that cough doesn't sound good, and Claire uses that to her advantage to gently persuade Alex to give his love the future she deserves without him. Third, Politics and Strange Bedfellows, An Afternoon at Versailles. About Bonnie Prince Charlie, one has to wonder. On the surface, he looks like a fool, but mark my words, he's not. And trust me, you could play a drinking game for every time he says mark me. A man who doesn't care much about politics, but cares a lot about getting drunk and getting laid. But he's also smart about building relationships. He became friends with the Comte and sold him some Fraser Madeira wine. It's business for Jamie, and it's also the start of the Stuarts' war chest, which they need to get back on the throne. The look on Jamie's face shows that he doesn't like the idea of doing business with his worst enemy, but the prince assures him that he knows what he's doing. Jamie isn't completely sure yet, but his commitment to the cause pushes him to close the deal. Neither of these men wants to work with the other, but they both know that for now, they are on the same side of the table. The rich, colorful, and lush settings of France are one of the best things about this time of year. Scotland has a rugged beauty, but France is a feast for the eyes with its refined grace. The amazing shots of the gardens of Versailles show how big and luxurious they are, even though, as you will read in our afterthoughts section, Versailles isn't actually in France. Also, the wardrobe department did didn't skimp on the clothes, with both men and women wearing bright colors and clothes with delicate feminine designs. One of my favorite outfits from this season is Claire's brown and yellow floral Versailles dress and hat. If a modern version of that pattern came in my monthly Stitch Fix box, I would not turn it down. So far, the afternoon in the gardens has been quiet. Jamie and the Duke are judging horses, and Claire and Annalise are enjoying the gardens and talking about Jamie. But things won't stay quiet for long.
along. Guess who's back at last? Back again? Tell a friend that Black Jack Randall is back. A little hurt, but otherwise in good health. We all know how that happened. He gets excited when Annalise accidentally tells him that Jamie is here, but he knows that Jamie won't do anything stupid. Drawing a sword in front of the king is a crime that can get you killed. When the king shows up, everyone has to be on their best behavior. Even if it's the most feared reunion, Jamie Fraser and Black Jack Randall breathing the same air. The tension between everyone is so high that you can cut it with a dull knife, but the king's presence shows everyone who's in charge and puts Randall in his place. From criticizing Randall's French to making well-timed comments about how cruel the English are to watching Randall beg the duke for his nephew's job. And when Jamie and Randall are finally alone, Jamie challenges Randall to a fight. Remember when we read Not in Scotland Anymore and found out that dueling was illegal in France? That will be a problem. Sure, Claire knows this, so she and Randall locked up a false charge of assaulting Mary Randall. This gives Claire time to tell her husband A, that this is a bad idea, and B, why it is a bad idea. But Jamie isn't affected by it, and Claire has to decide between her present life with Jamie and her future life with Frank. Claire says that she owes Frank his life because she saved his life twice. She promises to delay the duel for a year so that Frank's ancestor can get married and have a child. Jamie agrees because he's a man of honor, but what this will do to their marriage is still up in the air. As a bonus, Outlander's seventh season has cast Denny and Rachel Hunter's roles. Rachel and Dr. Denzel Denny Hunter has been cast for the seventh season of Outlander. The sixth season of Outlander, which is based on the books by Diana Gabaldon, has to be cut short because of problems with COVID and because star Katriana Balfe was pregnant. Sam Hewen, who plays Jamie, says that Outlander season seven will finish adapting Gabaldon's A Breath of Snow and Ashes and will be an extra long season with up to 18 episodes. Now, Deadline has confirmed that Denny and Rachel, two well-known characters from Gabaldon series will be in the movie. Izzy, Michael Small, and Joey Phillips will play the Hunter children in Outlander Season 7. The brother and sister are Quakers, who live a simple life until young Ian, John Bell, who brings William Ransom, who is sick, into their lives, Charles Vandervart. The report says that Denny has been studying medicine in London and Boston and wants to become a surgeon in the Revolutionary Army. Unlike the other Quakers in his area, he thinks that freedom is a gift from God that should be fought for and doesn't want to make peace with the British Empire. Rachel is a revolutionary, and despite her quiet appearance, she has a fiery side that makes both young Ian and William want to date her. Michael Small was almost cast as Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones before Sophie Turner, which is an interesting fact. She's best known now, though, for her parts in the movies Never Let Me Go and Snow White and the Huntsman, and in the BBC miniseries Great Expectations. Phillips has been in more plays, but he's also also been in TV movies like Doctors, Holby City, and The Accused. As Outlander plans to start its seventh season in 2023, the Hunters will keep making the show bigger and better by bringing more of Gavaldon's beloved book characters to life on screen. Unfortunately guys, that's all the time we had for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and follow the channel for more amazing content. Till next time, cheers!